You can't uh, help but pick up a newspaper or see an internet article or a TV article about the impact of the global economy and what's been happening with regulations that deal with financial statements and how financial statement impacts can have on uh, the stock market and, and you as an individual investor. The Global Strategies Committee is made up of three subcommittees. The first one is a technical issues committee that works on white papers and assisting some of our international representatives in, in uh, their duties. Secondly, we have a communications group that is out there to help state boards in, in dealing with their matters. And lastly, we, our committee is uh, uh, responsible for planning the international forum. And before uh, I'm done today, I'll tell you three reasons why you should plan on attending the international forum uh, in Orlando. Before the um, acronym police come and get me, um, I'll show you this next slide. <laughs> and that is uh, just to show you the complexities of the global regulatory environment. I'm not going to go through the definitions of all these different items. You've heard Carlos talk a little bit about you know, some of the issues where we have foreign firms that are dealing with uh, some of our companies here and, and impact our state boards. Uh, and we also have a number of representatives that actually participate on some of those boards. That includes uh, Galen, uh, who participates in the Inter International Auditing Standards Board, as well as the International Ethics Standards, and Dr. Ray Johnson, who works with the International Education Standards Committee. Uh, both the Ethics and Strategic Issues Committee, as well as the Global Standards Committee, uh, jointly worked with Galen this last year in, pre in preparing him with some comments that he could take to the International Ethics Board as it was looking to do some of, uh, of its updates of uh, the international codification this past year. Why does an international impact have uh, importance to you as a state regulator? Uh, I'll give you an example of a current situation with a multinational accounting firm. Uh, this firm has an office in China. It does uh, some work for a Chinese registrant, but it also has some international subsidiaries that works in the United States. The firm has been um, sued by the SEC to provide work papers of work that's done in China uh, to the SEC. In China, the firm that's with this multinational firm has to follow Chinese regulation. And in China, the work paper product cannot be shared with another country. So right now, this international firm is struggling with dealing with the Chinese regulators, regulators as well as the SEC regulators. And you, as a state board, might have to, to also entertain, you know, when you're given uh, or you're aware of different things that are occurring, um, whether or not you're going to, to think about how you might uh, interact with that firm in, in dealing with the SEC regulations, especially whatever state that, you're, that has that specific uh, registrant in it, uh, that could impact you. So that's why one of the reasons why you have to be very cognizant of what's going on in the international community and understand that there's more than one regulatory body that could impact uh, a firm that's dealing with uh, international standards. The Communications Committee is uh, out there trying to deal with these international boards with one, uh, communicating the benefit of the CPA exam, as well as maintaining the strength and momentum of the CPA credential. If you, uh, you know, and, and education is the key with the regulators, um, Dr. Ray Johnson is in fact working with those groups to make sure that we can understand what types of uh, educational equivalency is out there uh, in these other countries as registrants, or not registrants, but as individual participants look to come to the United States to perhaps get their CPA examination. From a cross-border regulation standpoint, for those of you at the annual meeting last year, you saw the MRA that was signed by Hong Kong. Uh, that's one of the things that we're attempting to do. We're doing that in other parts of the world and the, and the countries as, um, as we're trying to make sure that the CPA credential, especially the U.S. CPA credential, is, is one that's very important that uh, should be adopted worldwide. In terms of the fifth annual international convention, I told you there'd be three reasons why we want you to participate. First of all, you're already going to be participating in, in a part of that international forum. And the, the second day, uh, the first half, half of that second day, actually will cover international issues. Secondly, you already have a complimentary registration as a state board member, so it's going to be no additional cost for you other than sticking around an additional day. 
Um, the topics that will be included will be integrated reporting, um, cross-border practices, regulatory tools and trends, and the European financial crisis. And the third and most important reason why you might want to stay, I found out at dinner last night, uh, and that is, you know, as you can see, this is going to be Halloween night, and you'll be staying over Halloween night. And I was told by several representatives that in Florida, one of the best Halloween parties to go to is Universal Studios and get, uh, you know, the scariest Halloween you've ever had. So with that, I'll take any questions. Thank you.